Still not seeing Jen. Um, I don't know what's going on, but um, I'm not seeing her and I'm not getting a response from her via text. Um, Fletcher, do you want to just start um, the show and then we'll, um, if if uh, she's able to join, we'll... Yeah, that's fine. Um, I can get started. Um, I'm ready. All right. Um, okay. Welcome everybody to the Town of Amherst Conservation Commission, Wednesday, January 25th. Um, we're doing you know, a little bit of technical difficulties, but we'll, we're gonna just start moving along. Um, I'll be as the vice chair. I don't have any comments, um, but I will take it away to Dave. You wanna uh, fill us in some what's been going on? Actually, Fletcher, I think for the sake of time and, and the length of and the number of, of, of hearings and matters before the commission, I think I will I will just uh, reserve my comments till your next meeting. Okay. Um, appreciate that. Let me uh, just give me a here just a moment. Um, all right, well, I'm happy to just jump right in. Yeah. Um, so I talked to Jen today about the land use policy. Yep. Um, she is gonna, um, she basically has said that be, because of her work schedule, she'd prefer if Dave and I just sort of finalize the document and she'll take one last look at it before we um, put it into use because she just, she didn't think that she was gonna be able to to make it happen. Um, and then, then the other quick item um, was the polar plunge request, which was a, a land use application. Um, mm -hmm. I believe Kathy Crivelli. Uh, yes, she is here. Um, I'm going to pull her in if that's okay, Fletcher. Yeah, that's fine. That's great. And also just okay. let me know if you don't hear me. Um, I have a couple okay. issues with this microphone sometimes. Okay. Hey there, Kathy. Yep. Hi, you how are you great. doing? Good, thanks. Hey, do you want to um, just kind of give us a rundown of um, the polar plunge? What do you want to do at Puffer's Pond? So um, we are interested in doing a polar plunge. Um, I work at the Center for Women and Community, and we are a nonprofit based at UMass. Um, and each year we do a fundraising and awareness raising event in the community and started during COVID and is kind of morphed. But last year we did a hike, hike the notch challenge. And this year we were interested in doing a polar plunge challenge. Um, it happens in April as an event to um, raise awareness around sexual assault and services that we have. And so the idea is that we would have like a two hour block um, on a Sunday morning at Puffer's Pond and invite folks to register in advance. They'd have a waiver to sign. Um, we did get a certificate from insurance from UMass for the day um, where people could come and plunge in the cold water basically. Um, and, you know, we'd have educational tables available on the beach for people who weren't plunging about services and topics that we work with um, for anti-violence work. And um, in preparation, Aaron, Aaron was kind of helpful in guiding me on kind of what, <laughs> what I would need to do to start looking into this. And so I talked to the Amherst police chief um, I mean, the fire chief who said that they don't have an approval process necessarily, um, but Tim Nelson um, was the chief that I spoke with and he said he's happy to talk with anyone about concerns. Um, he did give me the name of one of their uh, medical guys who does kind of coordinates the EMTs and the mm -hmm. rescue folks and um, gave me some things to think about in terms of what we would want to have there. And it seems like there's all sorts of safety levels that you can work with, um, but it would be like two guys after hours or two staff after hours that, you know, if we wanted to have like people water safety certified and all that kind of stuff. Um, but I didn't get further than that in terms of making a solid plan for what we would do. UMass has its own EMTs um, and it seems like South Hadley has done one of these before. And so I was going to reach out to them to see if they, what they put in place, you know, because I think you could have EMTs on the ground, you could have EMTs in the water, there's all sorts of um, right. different ways to go on that. So I'm still investigating that. Um, I do have a drafted liability waiver. Um, 
And I don't know whether we'd have to do water quality testing at, at that time period um, and what that would entail. And I, I also know that there are folks that do the in-water training at Puffers. And so we could also figure out where, I think there's some areas where you can walk in and you know you can just keep walking in um, and gradually decline. And then I think that there's some areas where there's drop-offs. And so my hope is that we would be able to figure that out and kind of know where to instruct people or have ropes or something so that we don't go to the drop-off areas. Um, and we would have to get porta potties and we got, uh, we found out where that happens, and it seems like two porta potties that are ADA accessible is the way that we would go for that. Um, and then there is there is a company that does do trash, like they bring trash barrels and pick up. Um, I don't know how big the event will be at this point. I imagine like 50, 50 participants would be my guess. Um, but you know, if worse came to worse, we can load up the trash in our cars. That's kind of we you know, a nonprofit. That's kind of what we're used to doing. Is you know everything ourselves, but we have funding to, to not have to do that as well. So if you all wanted us to make sure we had a company in place, we could do that. And um, what else? So trash removal, the parking, um, I think we would just act as if we were, you know, folks at the beach. So during the summer, there's parking, I think all down that street. So I don't know if that works for the town, but that would be my guess. And then we could let Amherst Police Department know that that's happening. Um, I don't know if there's any other considerations that I didn't think about or that you all have concerns about, but I'm happy to keep on working on it. So, Cool. Great. Thank you. Um, just, just one thing about, um, is you said it's, it's, is it free or is your, are you charging? It's, it's a register. No, it's, it's just a fundraiser. It's a fundraiser, but we always, um, the way that our event is set up is that we value people spreading awareness as much as we value as much as we value people giving money and we don't want to the event to like make it prohibitive yeah, so gotcha. I think what we're going to try and do is like encourage certain fundraising like you know for sponsors for people to get sponsors and raise money but they don't have to and so there's no cost to attend cool and um that porta potty thing you said you just wanted to have to or, or was that did that come from um, our side I don't know or, I think that was I guess, uh, so yeah, I, I guess what I'm getting at, and Dave's got a question, Laura's got a question. Um, um, Dave, why don't you speak to this a little bit more about what your thoughts are on uh, the poor yeah. I mean, <clears throat> yeah. So yeah, a couple of thoughts. Uh, first of all, I appreciate all the, the work that you've done in advance of, of this meeting. And it sounds like you've you've hit on a lot of the, the important points. I also, I guess, would, not want to take too much of the commission's time tonight, um, you know, because it seems like some of these these issues need to be worked on over the next couple of months. This event is not until April. So, you know, I would be happy for the commission to kind of um, uh, uh, charge staff as we often do with many events on conservation land. Uh, once if you're in agreement to allow this to happen, we could work on the details uh, later with the applicant. But it sounds like you know my most important thing, um, uh, or a couple of things, were the liability. Um, I, I think it's it's pretty critical that you actually have those off-duty firefighters uh, on the beach. I don't think you need them in the water. Uh, you you could certainly we could certainly arrange for um, you to meet with our staff, uh, our field staff, to talk about where you want to do this. I presume you'd want to do it on the main beach off of State Street. Um, um, I will say that even though this is being done in April, I, I didn't catch the date. What is the date again? It's early April? April 2nd. April 2nd. Yeah, so so that water is going to be quite cold, even though it's April. A lot of polar plunges happen in January, December, January, February, but um, it's still going to be very cold in buffers. Um, but I think, you know, we could work out a lot of the details with you further. I do think having porta potties there would would make sense. I'm not sure you need two of the ADA porta potties. Um, I think one for that size group might be fine, but we can talk about that. Um, I also want to kind of work with you a little bit because April is also a big fishing month. So um, I can also see that there would likely be fisher fish uh, people fishing on the on the the main beach in April. Um, but I think a lot of those details we can work out with you, uh, you know, as the event gets closer. But 
liability insurance requiring that you have those EMTs on the beach makes perfect sense. Porta potties, parking should be fine on State Street. Um, yeah, um, so I'm happy to help if if the commission has additional questions of you and and or of me. I just had a quick question. Is there going to be a limitation on the number of participants? I know it says between 50 and 100, but um, is there going to be a cap number? I didn't plan on having a cap number um, because when I figure like what happens there in the summer, it's like it can kind of hold a bunch of people. I just am imagining we haven't had more than that register for any of our challenges in the past. And so, and we're like narrowing down our pool of crazy people that will jump in the water in the cold, right? So <laughs> I don't think we're gonna get more than that, but you never know. And, you know, I, my, one of my concerns was more just because of the, the campus being right there and liability in terms of kids who are, you know, excited to do something a little bit wild and like, what would that mean? But that's why I think Sunday morning is kind of a better time to <laughs> offer it. So that's what we were hoping to kind of reduce the, potential impact of, of students of getting too excited about it because it would be early on Sunday. <laughs> mm -hmm. Andre, you have a um, quick something? Sorry, it took me a little bit to get the, the mute off. Um, I, just wondering uh, if maybe you would be able to like cordon off a little area there uh, just for your own, for your own, uh, for liability purposes, just to make sure that this is the area people go to and kind of keep the um, keep the rescuers uh, 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 focus a little bit uh, narrowed down and so on. I'm sure you can take care of that with uh, you can address that with uh, the fire department and so on. But yeah, and I think I don't know, David, if you have field people who mm -hmm. kind of know the, the, the layout of the river, I mean, the layout of the pond, that would be good because I mean, I'll go in there. I will go in there and figure it out. <laughs> if somebody already knows that, that would be good. And I, I would be recording enough if there are drop-offs would be a smart thing. Sure. Yeah, we we can we can work with you on that. I mean, you know, I've never done a polar plunge, but I used to be a competitive swimmer and and I um I am very familiar with them. And yet people do wanna, you know, they wanna dunk their head and get right out for the most yeah. part. Yeah, um, exactly. So this is not a a, win, a, a spring triathlon. So <laughs> they want to jump Michelle, in, get oh, get wet, and get get the heck out of the pond. So we can we can work with you on that. Right. And I think I think kind of narrowing the, the the focus is a is a good idea. So we can work with you on that. Great, thank you, Michelle. You have a, a quick. I was just going to say that at least in the summer, if you're facing the pond from the main entrance, the left side is like the kids' side, which is more gradual and beachy. And then the fisher men and women are usually on the right side where the river comes out. So there might be some easy natural separation between uses and also just wading in. So that's just my pro tip. Well, good point, very good point. So um, it sounds like um, Aaron and David would be willing to work with Kathy here. Mm -hmm. I guess if there's any issues, like come back to the Conservation Commission, or is it? I, I feel like you guys can probably work this out. I mean, I'm in favor of it, so I don't know. Yeah, I, I think as long as the commission is supportive of it, you know, I yeah. I would encourage you to, you know, okay. approve it, uh, subject to you know some of the things we've talked about, working with staff on parking, uh, the fire department presence, liability insurance, and you know, focusing the the event itself in one part of the beach and not taking over the entire beach so other people coming to the to the to uh puffers can do their thing whether they're fishing or or whatever uh okay. on and, and i think michelle's suggestion uh, is probably focused on the left side of the main beach off of state street makes sense excellent all right well that sounds like a, we're moving forward there so um anybody want to make a motion I'll make a motion um, to approve the polar plunge scheduled for April 2nd, 2023. Got Laura on there for a motion. Seconded. There you go, Cameron. You go, Kathy. Yeah, there we go. We're getting it. You're going to get that polar plunge. Um, I, oh, I'm sorry. Voice vote, Laura. Hi. <laughs> uh, do I have to do voice vote? Yes. Yeah. Jen. Hi. Andre. Aye. Michelle. 
Aye. Cameron. Aye. And I for Fletcher. All that right. means good. <laughs> yeah. Yes. And I talked to David and Aaron, and then you guys will finalize some stuff like all the things that uh, Dave just bullet listed for you. And um, all right, we challenge all of you to attend. I, all I knew you were going to say that. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Have a good night. Thanks so much. Appreciate it. Take care. Fletcher, do you want to run the meeting? I'm sorry. Not at all, but I was like, yeah, but you know, I could be, yeah, I mean, I need sorry to Sorry, issues, you guys. I don't know what the thing was. I went through three my computers. Sheet. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, I'll take over. Or what time is it? We Do you want to do another other business item? We have until 7.30. We have eight minutes, Erin. Yeah. Um, Yes, we got a request for um, an extension to order of conditions for the um, Southeast Commons property, which is the large um, project that's behind Florence Savings Bank. Um, I went out and had a look at the property. Um, I think overall they're in compliance. They've been providing um, weekly monitoring reports to me. There was a couple issues um, with erosion controls behind the um, construction um, trailer. Just there's like one section of failed controls and then there's a piece of like um, some kind of construction debris foam that's behind the controls that needs to be cleaned up. Um, other than that, the site is in good shape. The um, monitor, um, the um, replication area looks great. Uh, so the um, owner has requested an extension to August 31st, 2024. Um, and I would be fine with that extension. Usually applicants will ask for a full three years. And this is, um, I think, a good opportunity for us to have a short extension and continue monitoring the um, restoration area, give them a little more time to button up the site, and um, I can take care of addressing the outstanding issues on the site before I release the extension. That sounds um, great. I, I do have site visit photos if you're interested in seeing them. Um, if not, it's fine. Is there something else we can cover in four minutes? <laughs> or should we look at some photos? Um, yeah, I'll show you some photos. Show us the photos. Okay. <laughs> so you can get a sense of what it looks like out there and they might be in backwards order i apologize i was kind of scrambling to get these uploaded um yeah so this is going backwards um but coming from florence savings bank side this um i did ask them about this because this is an outfall for the um stormwater system, but they've told me that this is just a puddle that seems to be forming. This pipe is not actually discharging water at this point. It's not online. Um, the retaining wall is up, which looks looks good and actually is kind of a nice because um, it eliminates that slope there. The erosion controls along this section are in really good shape. Um, I am going to mention to them about snow storage because they've been pushing the snow storage up against the replication area a little bit. Um, it hasn't gone over the fencing, but I'll just mention to them about snow storage. Um, yeah, the replicate that's the replication area. It's it's doing really well. Looks great. Um, it's holding water. Um, this is the area of concern um, behind the construction uh, this is the de construction debris that's back behind the fence but you can see it's like this this fence is flapping in the breeze there's no straw waddle here so I'm going to get them to correct that um let me see is that everything this is just looking back at the wetland and then from the street if you're okay if you're comfortable with till um till then I'll, I'll make I have to make a motion to extend it to you say um august 2024 uh august 31st 2024 august 31st 2024 Come for a second second got a second for michelle voice vote michelle hi fletcher hi cameron hi laura hi andre hi i'm also an i unanimous all right Okay. Um, 
So let me see what else can we cover in four minutes. Um, I'm assuming we don't want to get in. Do we want to talk about the DPW memo now? Maybe. Sure. Yeah. Okay. That, that's let's cover that quickly because they're not planning on coming. So. Right. So um, I can introduce this topic. So this is something I mentioned briefly at our last regularly scheduled meeting. Um, what is the location of that outfall that they dug up, Erin? Um, it's a great question. Let me see if I can get the address. Um, I want to say it's 400. Um, I want to say it's 400 West Street. It's definitely on West Street. I don't remember yeah. the number. Yeah. But basically, um, there was the DPW went in and cleaned out um, what probably at some point was some sort of culvert. Um, but it's clear from the photos, which um, I can try to pull up, Aaron, if I got them. I have them. Um, that I mean, this was like an excavator un uncovering a culvert that had been buried by years and years and years of accumulation. It look, kind of looks like a class in wetland soil delineation um, instead of regular maintenance of a culvert. Um, and when Aaron, so there was a complaint about it. And when Aaron inquired with the DPW, there was pushback and a reference to this being kind of regular maintenance activity. So not requiring any kind of RDA or NOI, um, but clearly that is not regular maintenance. That is like reclamation of a culvert that's been buried for a long time. Um, so I think the best route is to encourage the DPW to have some sort of blanket NOI to cover these ish, these items that are just more than regular maintenance, very similar to what we have with UMass. Um, and that will kind of take the stress off of Aaron to communicate about every single thing like this that comes up and hopefully encourage communication and kind of collaboration between us and the DPW. I see your um, hand, Laura, just let me get through this um, intro. And um, so we need to accomplish two things. One is encouraging them to clean up that site. And two is kind of thinking about how we would move forward on a blanket like NOI. Um, that's not a light lift. So we're, we're going to have to think hard about like kind of how we um, help them do that essentially. Um, but first and foremost, we need to get the site cleared up. So um, we were thinking the best approach is to kind of write a memo uh, um, and say like referencing this site this is more than regular maintenance please you know put in some sediment and erosion controls and clean up the site and let us know like what the best forum to work on collab collaborate on some sort of NOI for situations like this that are more than just maintenance um Aaron did you want to say anything else about the details of that no, I think you covered it beautifully. Okay. okay. Laura, did you have a question? Just really briefly, I had a question. I was reading the, the email thread. Is there, it seems like, and maybe I didn't, there might be context I'm missing, but it would seem like, even though, of course, we're going to keep comments anonymous, it would seem like we would want to share with DPW any complaints that we receive about their work just in general. Um, and it seemed as though there was a reluctance to do that in the email thread. And I was just curious why, because if I provided an anonymous complaint, I would actually hope that it would go, I mean, that's how people improve their work. So that, I was just curious as to why we didn't, why we weren't transparent there. Yeah. So you know, that's, thank you for bringing that up, Laura. So the, um, the, notification about that work came to me third hand so a resident contacted another staff member and then that staff member notified me um i went out and did the site visit to confirm if it was accurate there was nothing provided to me in writing i didn't even know the person's name um other than there was excavation going on at this location there was an implication made by the dpw director that i had said there was a lot of complaints and also there was like a, an implication made that I had some information to forward to them. And I don't really know where that came from because I didn't say there was a lot of complaints. I just said I was notified that there was work going on here and I didn't know who did it. 
Um, and it kind of like spiraled out of control in the email chain. And in the end, it was the implication was made that I was trying to withhold information, which was absolutely not accurate. Um, I said, it came to me third hand. I don't have anything in writing to share with you. But my my ordinary practice is that if a complaint comes to me in writing or otherwise, mm -hmm. if somebody wants to remain anonymous, I won't share that with mm -hmm. anyone. Um, if it's a verbal, I won't share it. But if somebody doesn't care or wants to be known, then I will release it. Um, but I have no problem releasing if I had like a series of complaints and I, yeah. for example, blacked out someone's name or yeah, something. Yeah, exactly. Even if it was anonymous, yeah. you don't have to say who it was. But okay, yeah. I just wanted to clarify that. Okay. Yeah, so. no, I appreciate that. And I mean, the long and the short of it is that this was a violation. <laughs> So it kind of doesn't matter <laughs> where it came from. Now that we know that it's there, we have to figure out how to get it fixed and how. Yeah, to no, I would. I just want to make sure, as a policy, like as a government, everyone's like, "Hey, I hear all these. Yeah. If there's things coming, I'm passing it over to the right group." You know. Right. Yeah. Totally. Yeah. So do you um, feel that a uh, memo with a, 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 a after we just what we just covered there? Um, is the uh, DPW okay with this idea? Yeah, I mean, my talk thought was DPW about this, or are we talking first? We're going to throw a memo at them about a blank NOI, or is there already conversations happening with this, or, or is this all going to happen here? Well, my thought was to also in the memo invite DPW to come talk to the commission okay. um, and say we'd like to have an open dialogue with you. If if you guys would like to have a conversation with us, you're more than welcome. I also shared. Um, examples of several, I got several examples of bundled notice of intent um, from DEP that other towns use just to try to help them out. And I offered that I would help in any way I could. So I've been trying to um, keep that line of communication open. It's what's difficult for me is like sort of the checks and balance because it's another department and I want to make yes. sure I'm being um, transparent that this happened and I'm working with them to try to resolve it and also be clear with DPW that like we have to follow up on this and make sure that we have a policy in place. Right. And in this case, we need to be kind of the structure and the backbone for this because it's not a good position to have Erin enforcing her colleagues in these situations. That's just, that's, yeah, it's just that's, untenable, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, um, right. But Fletcher, you know, I, I well, hear what you're saying. Like, we got to understand, we got to to follow through with the steps so i'm just wondering yeah that's, that's all i was wondering if a memo was enough or you know, yeah i mean the other thing we could do is email them or, right like you know what uh i guess like do you think that there's a less formal compromise that kind of yeah i mean i already emailed <laughs> and um there hasn't really been any follow-up on it and i felt like maybe if it came from the commission that it would be a little more, uh, a little less of an optional um, response and a little more of like, we need you to do this response. Right. I, I support like, memo. Like yeah, I think that there's also some like document trail that will extend into different, you know, directorships and staff with that as well. You know, in addition to whatever else you guys think it's appropriate, but yeah, I think formal is good. Okay. Yeah, I, I, I agree with you guys. I think uh, I think at, at this point, if the emails, uh, if within house emails haven't uh, produce, produced uh, much in terms of uh, reaction, then uh, memo and we can talk uh, talk to them. Okay, and you know we can share. Aaron, I'll draft something really short. Maybe you can share it with the commission for feedback um, and make sure, guys, that I'm hitting the right tone. You know, like. The goal is to be collaborative, but we need to have a system here because this isn't a fair position um, for Aaron to be in, basically. And they violated the Wetland Protection Act. So there's that. Um, all right. So uh, just let me know. Anyone, raise your hand or if you have any further concerns, um, let me or Aaron know. But otherwise, sometime in the next week, you'll get something from Aaron. Uh, to look at and we'll go from there i'm seeing nods thumbs up okay okay thanks everyone um with that 736 i think we can jump into our first hearing um which i think i have to open
Um, boy. Oh yeah. Thanks, Aaron. Um, Sorry, okay. I'm gonna have a hard, um, Jen, I'm gonna make you co-host because now that I'm sharing my screen, I can't see if somebody raises their hand. Okay. Uh, okay. okay, so I'll just open this. Um, so, uh, okay, so how do I open an ANRAD? I guess with NOI? I would use NOI and just substitute okay. ANRAD with it. Um, this public hearing is now called to order. This hearing is, be is being held as required by the provisions of Chapter 131, Section 40 of the General Laws of the Commonwealth, an act relative to the protection of wetlands, as most recently amended, and Article 3.31, Wetlands Protection under Town of Amherst General Bylaws. This is the abbreviated Notice of Resource Area Delineation, ANRAD. Horsley Witten Group on behalf of the Town of Amherst for confirmation of resource area boundaries at 70 Southeast Street. This is the Fort River Elementary School. Um, is there going to be anyone here, Erin? Yeah, so there should be uh, Amy Ball, and I can stop okay. sharing to help. Um, Amy Ball, and um, there, uh, let me think, um, let me jump out for a second so I can look in the list. Um, Donna. Donna. Yes, yes, yeah, Donna, Donna Donesco. Yep. Okay, I got her. And if there's anyone else in the audience who is representing this ANRAD application, please raise your hand. I see you, Amy. Hi, Donna. Hello. I think Tim Cooper. Um, okay, oh, I see him. Thank you. Yeah. Yep. And I don't know if Kathy Shane is um, in the audience. She is. Should I bring her in? That would be great. She is the proponent. And the last person would be Margaret Wood, who is the owner's project manager for the project. Got it. Yeah. I think I think that's all of us. Oh, wow. OK. Thank you. Yeah, of course. Hi, everyone. Um, so I should have gone over this at the top of the meeting, but I'll do it now. Just so you guys know, the way we run these hearings is we usually shoot for about maximum of 20 minutes per hearing. Um, and the way we delineate that is a five minute overview by the applicant or the applicant's representative, five minutes of kind of update and comments from staff, kind of where we on and are on the punch list of um, the application status and any site visit photos, um, five minutes for public comment where we really try to keep it to one to two minutes per person, um, and then five minutes for questions and comments from the commissioner. Uh, we try to be really clear about um, if we're not able to close the hearing, kind of what in further information we need um, if we continue in order to move forward at the next meeting. Um, so with that, uh, if the applicants and applicants representatives, if you guys want to introduce yourselves, um, and I don't know, Donna, would you be the one kind of presenting the status of this ANRAD? Um, actually, I'm, I'll turn it over to Amy Ball. Uh, okay. with horse group, but while I, I'm unmuted, which um, I'll just say, my name's Donna Dinesco for everyone um, with Dinesco Design, and we're the architects of record for the Fort River Elementary School project. But I'm going to let Amy um, do her thing, and we're here just to support. Great. Thank Great. you, Donna. Thank you. Um, good evening. Uh, for the record, Amy Ball, the senior ecologist with the Horsley Witten Group. Um, I have a, a handful of slides, mostly pictures, um, that I thought I'd share with the commission, if I can share my screen. Yeah, you should be able to share. There should be a, um, yep, there we go. Okay. You, see, you see a slide? Slide for the, yep. for the school. Okay, yep. great. Um, so we're here for the um, abbreviated Notice of Resource Area Delineation at the Fort River Elementary School. Um, we thought she'd give you a little context. I'm sure most of you probably know where this is in town. Um, it's in the sort of eastern portion of the, of the um, town itself. It's along the Fort River, which makes up the eastern property boundary uh, of Intermittent Stream Fearing Brook, uh, makes up the southern property boundary. And then um, there's Route 9 to the south and west, and um, the southeast street is here off just to the west. Um, again, this is just a quick aerial overview with the property outlined in red. Uh, you can see that the, for the most part, the, um, the school is, property is occupied by the school itself, a lot of play, play fields and parking lots. 
and then there's a sort of a forested portion that occupies the better part of the eastern property. So we're, we're looking to confirm the resource area boundaries of a number of resources that are associated with the Port River and or the Tearing Brook, um, including BBW, land under water, inland bank, riverfront area, um, an area subject to storm flowage, and then of course the associated buffers. We fully recognize that there's um, a good portion of the property is also located within the flood zone or bordering land subject to flooding. Um, however, we're not seeking confirmation of that right now under this AMRAD because we understand that the town is in the process of adopting the uh, updated um, FEMA maps. And that does not become effective, I believe, for at least a couple of weeks into February sometime. So this is a sort of an overall uh, color rendered um, compiled plan that we submitted um, there were 10 sheets, I believe, but this is a com compilation of the, the project plans. Um, the school there is um, obvious. There's the, the tree line that, that kind of delineates the um, areas that are to the east. That is where the Fairing, or sorry, where the Fort River is. Um, and a couple of the areas of BBW, um, riverfront area is almost exclusively within that, um, that forested area. The two wetland areas that we are focusing on for the purposes of the ANRAD are wetland B, which is in the northern part here, and wetland C, which is uh, connected um, to wetland B, uh, like a 12 inch, um, uh, I think it's has, um, 12 inch pipe, let's go with that. <laughs> and then there's this area uh, subject to storm flowage that um, eventually the waters will get to Fairing Brook. Um, so the BBW, like I said, there are two uh, wetlands, area B and area C. B is up here, and C is this finger-like projection that comes into the fields. Um, area B is a, a forested transitional shrub swamp and emergent marsh, um, has uh, an interesting characteristic in that it also extends out beyond the tree line and into the playground area. Um, I should mention, if we haven't already, that uh, SWCA wetland scientists did the original delineation uh, when Horsley Witten was brought on for the project with the architect firm, um, Denisco Design. We uh, took over their wetland boundary, but then did our own independent assessment of what, um, what the resource areas were. And this is one of the little areas that we made a slight adjustment from their original delineation to include this area of Phragmites that is growing up through the playground chips in Wetland B. Wetland C is, as I said, is connected um, by a pipe uh, beneath a, an existing uh, pathway. It extends out into the fields just uh, to the west of the tree line. It is more of an emergent marsh situation with a couple of small shrubs in there. Um, this view on the left here is, is is facing more or less north. You can see that we had the, the resource areas uh, reflagged last August by the Berkshire Design um, Company who did the, the survey work. Um, we left pins in the ground, um, you know, for safety purposes that we knew that, you know, this is part of the play areas for the elementary school children. Um, I, I, and um, I, I guess we were going to have a site visit yesterday, but I can understand why we did not, <laughs> given the, um, the snow cover that you all have. Um, so there's just a couple of more views here of this emergent marsh community. This is sort of the opposite view of the one on the left here looking south, um, and then sort of an oblique view um, looking back toward the school. There are two or three other BBWs. We're not actually seeking uh, approval of the boundaries. Um, so there was limited information provided to the commission. Um, wetlands D and E are well within the, the forested portion beyond a, a chain link fence um, and are not really going to come into play at all with the, the future school project. Um, and wetland F is uh, up in the far northwestern corner of the of the property extends off site and it is largely a um, it's largely fed by stormwater, um, as you can see, because there's there are twin um, elliptical culverts that go that discharge from this wetland area 
through the parking lot across the park, uh, the, the playing fields and sort of the southwestern corner of the site, and then eventually discharge into Farring Brook. Um, so as I mentioned, Riverfront area is, is um, located almost entirely within the forested portion. I think there's a small portion of the grass fields that also fall within Riverfront area, um, delineated by the mean or high water, the high water of the um, Fort River. Um, so there's a couple of images of the Fort River, which I'm sure you're all familiar with. Um, and then Faring Brook to the south um, is, has been uh, delineated as Inland Bank. There's no real BBW associated with it. It's um, well-defined, uh, scoured out, and, and is clearly um, being fed by at least some stormwater uh, from Wetland F, if not from other sources. And then there's an area A, um, and it, it is this sort of dark shadow um, finger-like projection that comes up between the fields um, in the southwestern corner of the site and the uh, main uh, baseball field. That we, um, I think SWCA had originally qual uh, qualified it as a boarding vegetated wetland when we took a, an extra look at it. Um, we found that there were um, Yes, a few uh, hydric soils within this swale. Um, the photos in the upper right are from the SWA, SWCA report. Um, and also uh, very few, um, a, a handful of, of um, sedges. But when you look in the other direction, um, the pink flags along the chain link fence here, the one at the edge of the tree line and the one just, just on the ground here next to the pole. Those discharge into uh, a stilling basin of sorts. We found that this, this black pipe here is actually an under drain within the, um, within the, the field itself. And so um, after discussing this with uh, Ms. Shack in, I believe, was that October, early October that we went out there, um, we determined that it is more uh, suitable to, to describe this as an area subject to storm flowage. Um, and while this is not part of the uh, ANRAD process per se, we also um, wanted the commission to be aware that there are some additional site constraints. Um, there will be a, a future notice of intent filing with the commission um, at some point, and Donna can probably you know, weigh in on that um, uh, timing. Uh, but we do have two rare species, two species of special concern, the wood turtle and the creeper, which is a freshwater mussel. Um, but just to reiterate, the only uh, resource areas that we're looking for confirmation under the AMRED at this point are the areas um, B and C for the BVW, um, general consensus of the land underwater bodies in the inland bank um, and the riverfront area that all comes from the mean annual high water flagging, um, confirmation of the inland bank for Fearing Brook, and then the area subject to storm flowage, and then of course the associated buffer zones, but not the flood zone. And I think that's it. So I will turn it back over to the commission. Thanks, Amy. That was really thorough. I appreciate it. Um, Aaron, did you have any additional information or kind of guidance to add? Yeah. So by way of background and my involvement, um, I have Amy um, and Ms. Donesco contacted me back in um, October about a site visit, which I attended with them and um, viewed the wetlands sort of that were in question. Um, I do have photos from that um, site walk if you guys are interested in seeing them. Um, so just to delve in a little bit more to that, that swale, because that um, sort of was a little bit puzzling to me of why they would have included that as BVW. Um, there, there were no, I mean, there, there was a small section closest to the fence, which was sort of like a pocket of, of um, sedges were in the grass. Um, mm -hmm. And again, closer to the fenced area, we could see some evidence of hydric soils. But as you moved um, north in the swale, um, sort of adjacent to the ball field, there was it was just field grass and um, there was no hydric soils of any kind. So um, I'm not really sure what was 
going on there, if that was just sort of an, an overly um, conservative delineation or, or what, but I said, um, my biggest concern there was stormwater and, and um, historic context I have related to stormwater in that location is that um, there is stormwater outflow that comes into the um, Faring Brook and caused a scour on the brook, which um, when Beth Wilson did her um, project to restore the floodplain of the, the Faring, there was that requirement to install that little detention basin um, to uh, reduce some of the erosion and sedimentation that was happening at that outfall. So I felt pretty comfortable um, concluding that to, to be um, an area that they should ensure is dealt with from a stormwater standpoint um, and that they spe pay special attention to dealing with stormwater adequately in that location, but that it wasn't a BBW. Um, yeah, can I just quickly ask, Amy, yeah. could you go back to the uh, wetland map that had a, a B, C, D? Sorry, Aaron. Okay, that's much help. That's better. Thank you. Yeah, so Aaron's talking about A, Fletcher. This is yes. this area down here. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thanks, Aaron. Yep. Do you want to share any site photos quickly? Sure. Do I need to stop sharing? Um, I'm not sure. Uh, no, I think I can just steal it. Um, so we walked, we walked the entire site and going back. I didn't check every single flag in, along the river. Um, this was one area, again, Amy addressed this. This was one area where I asked for flagging to be adjusted because clearly there was some encroachment of the BBW onto the playground. And really the, the playground shouldn't be in that location. Um, and uh, yeah, so very similar, you know, the, we were both taking photos. This is another photo. The swale is kind of behind here, as I recall, behind the community garden. Um, this is the the one plug we found with hydric soils in the, in that um, area, a. area A of the storm flowage area. Um, so yeah, and we did we did take a number, and you can see that there was there was no evidence in other locations of anything. Um, there was a test well being done at this point um, when we were out there for the um, for the uh, geothermal well that the town was exploring there. Um, yeah, so that that was that we were going to have a, another collective site visit. Obviously, there was a big storm on Monday or yeah, on Monday, and then our, the site visit was for Tuesday. So um, we had to cancel that meeting. There was really no point of doing it. So I think from my standpoint, it was really just to get a read from the commission as to your comfort level with the delineation itself. Um, SWCA has looked at it. Horsley Witten's looked at it. I've looked at it um, with them. Um, and just to kind of get a sense of are you comfortable with the delineation? Do you want to have a site visit prior to um, approving this? Thanks, Aaron. Yeah, so what I was going to say is I think we should take public comment, but commissioners, you know, in my experience with Ann Rads, I think this is extremely thorough and I'm comfortable with it. I think the question is, do we want to delay this to schedule a site visit? Do you guys want to see it? Um, or are we comfortable with kind of Aaron's review? Um, so, I'll kind of leave you with that thought. Let's take public comment and then come back um, to a commissioner discussion. Um, so if you are uh, in, if you are an attendee of the Conservation Commission meeting and you have a comment or question about the resource area delineation that we've been discussing at the Fort River Elementary School, please raise your hand. I'll take this moment while I wait for a few minutes to see if anyone has any questions or comments to just say at the top of your comments if you can identify yourself and your address and then um, please limit your comments and questions to two minutes. We'd appreciate it. We have a lot of people in attendance. There are 26 people in attendance right now, but nobody's raised their hands. Okay, I'll keep an eye on it, but I'm not seeing any raised hands. Um, so commissioners, 
comfort level with this? Any technical concerns about the ANRAD? I don't have any issues. Looks really thorough to me. I mean, it's a very wet place, but. Yeah. I'm surprised to see all that frag coming into the playground. The frag in the yeah. sunset is really That's special. Rough. That should be on like some educational slide. Um, they move okay. Dave, do you have a comment? Yeah, I just want to quickly add, um, I, I, agree, I wanted to concur with Aaron about uh, the area A, that, that drainage going toward the Fearing Brook. And I wanted to make sure that, that the team working on the site, and Aaron, maybe you could confirm with me, does the Donesco team have all the information from, you know, that was part of the earlier NOI for the Fearing Brook project, the, the floodplain restoration, because of course, a fair bit of work was done on that on the north side of the Fearing Brook. So have we gotten them all that? I mean, we, we yeah. should even have as built, you know, for for how that drainage was constructed. Yeah. So to connect the dots, I mean, he, Dave's saying that the town probably has as built with pretty detailed elevations. Um, that could be helpful. So yeah. um, that would be helpful. Yeah. Amy. Yeah, I think I think Aaron could work with Beth Wilson from our DPW to get you that for that area A. That would be great. Thank you. Thanks, Steve. All right, commissioners, I think we're looking for a motion. Make a motion to accept the ANRAD to the Fort River School. Okay. So I think um Aaron, will you share your slide? <laughs> of course. Yeah, I'm right. sorry. I'm taking There's notes little, here. There's Yep. And I, I did draft a motion that sort yeah. of spells out what the, um, and I'm so sorry about the PowerPoint. It got hung up in my like outbox somehow and didn't send. No worries. Yeah. So there, Fletcher, if you could just read that for, yeah. for posterity, that would be great. Um, actually, I have to move my one second here. There we go. All right, yeah, so I'll make a motion to confirm the resource delineation and issue an order of resource area delineation for 70 Southeast Street, approving only 1,121 linear feet of BDW. Is that correct? Yes. That, okay. That's what um, was in the permit, yes. Yep, thank you. Sorry, now I see it, B and C. 700 linear feet of inland bank and 1,660 linear feet of riverfront area, land underwater slash area subject to storm flowage and buffer zones. Commission, we're looking for a second. Second. Is that you, Cameron? Yes. Okay, voice vote. Um, Fletcher? Aye. Michelle? Aye. Andre? Aye. Laura? Aye. And Cameron? Aye. And I'm also an aye. Great. Thank you, Amy. Thank, well, you. thank you very much. Thank you, everyone. Have a good evening. Yeah, you all too. Bye -bye. Um, I'm slowly going through. Okay. All right. Um, great. Next up, the RDA. Okay, so this is a new. RDA, so let me just open the public hearing. Um, this public meeting is now called to order. This meeting is being held as required by the provisions of Chapter 131, Section 40 of the General Laws of the Commonwealth and Act relative to the protection of wetlands as most recently amended in Article 3.31, wetlands protection under the Town of Amherst General Bylaws. This is the 735 agenda items, a request for determination of applicability. Wendell Wetland Services on behalf of Christopher and Deanne Riddle to determine whether Work to install a geothermal well is subject to the Wetlands Protection Act and whether the area and or work depicted on plans is subject to the Town of Amherst Wetlands Bylaw slash regulations at 252 Strong Street. Um, do you know if anyone was going to be here for this? If you are um, an applicant or the applicant's representative, if you could raise your hand so it can bring you in as a pan. Oh, Aaron already did it. Hello. <laughs> Hi, those... Ward Smith here. Oh. Can, you, can you hear me? Yep, yes. we see you in here. You thanks, Ward, and we see you. Okay. Um, Mr. Mrs. Riddle. Okay. Um, are they there? Are they here too? Yes, they okay. are here. 
Um, we... Shall we give this... it to you or do you want, what would you like? Do you have a copy of the plan you could put up, Erin? Yes, just bear with me one second, I'll grab it. Yeah, and so just to kind of catch everyone up on this, I think, you know, um, this this project is not really of concern. I think this is going to be a negative determination. We just wanted to be sure how the tailings from the well drilling operation were being handled. So I think hopefully that's what Aaron's pulling up is just a detail on exactly how tailings from the drilling itself will be handled. Um. I'm going to do a screen share so you guys can see the plan, but um, there was an email that provided some details um, and we might need a condition to just make sure that we're, um, okay. you know, make sure just, that, yeah. yeah. I just want to start just an overview. Um, this, the wetland boundary was originally delineated by Chuck Douchy in 2014 uh, with blue flags, some of which I could still find in the field. I redelineated it, and my delineation was, I would say, generally in agreement with him. His is a, although slightly higher in places. Uh, the main place it diverged was actually closest to where the proposed geothermal well is going to be. You can see here my flags A16, A17, and A18. Um, the area between Chuck Douchey's line and mine, uh, I agreed with him. It didn't have hydric soils, but it was all sensitive for an and dominant soft rush, which is a pretty strong wetland indicator. And I don't know if the hydrology has changed, but I, I kind of did a cautious delineation in that location. <clears throat> We're about 51 feet as measured by tape um, in the field from the proposed geothermal well location. Um, the, the well is gonna be drilled and there will be a uh, four foot deep hole in the ground for the, uh, the water coming out of the well, allowing the water to infiltrate. And the water will then be pumped from that pit to a dumpster, which is shown above in the upper right-hand corner of the screen there, um, a line dumpster with uh, filter fabric that will be encircled with double staked hay bales as will the proposed geothermal well location and the, uh, the settling pit. Uh, Chris, do you want to expound on that a little, expand on that a little more? Well, I'm not an expert. Uh, I'm just going to give you an overview. It says that we, we have a, uh, this is a net zero house here, and we would like to, except for the fact, except for a small amount, and we're trying to get it up to net zero, and uh, and so converting the, the air source to ground source heat pump will do that. Uh, the payback is in the order of 525 years. I just, uh, one thing I failed to mention is all of this is located within an existing lawn and when it's done, everything will be put back, the soil will be put back and everything will be restored to lawn. Where will the set, I see the proposed location of lined dumpster where yes. once it's filtered out of the dumpster, where is like, where is the pit? There is no pit there, but okay. I'm thinking about it, the pit is going to be over near the well location, between the well location and away from the wetland. Okay. Um, so there's no pit proposed there, but we, I don't think we have a really good uh, answer for how much water is going to go into that dumpster. I'm hoping it's not going to be very much, but as a precaution, I think we could propose a infiltration trench temporarily to the north, I, I can't see it on my plan, but there is an intermittent stream. I think it's more than 100 feet away from the, the uh, dumpster, but it is downhill from the dumpster. So it could be, would be possible to make a, an infiltration trench, maybe just like two feet deep by 10 feet long um, on the down gradient side of that. So that any water that comes out of that dumpster, which there will be some, but again, I don't have a good handle on the volume of that. And I don't think Chris got a good answer from the contractor. So, so I've, I've so, seen this done before. Um, and when it's pumped into the dumpster, um, it's not a tremendous amount of water. And usually when it's flowing through the filter fabric, it's moving sort of slowly out of mm -hmm. the dumpster. Um, 
I think that putting in an infiltration trench just for that would be a little overkill, but I do like the idea of having the double staked hay bales um, along the boundary of the area mm -hmm. where the dumpster is going to be just in case there's any, because I'm not worried about the water. I'm worried about sediment in the water. So the bales would yeah. just slow it down. Plus that area is all vegetated there. So um, I okay. think that that'll add to the filtration. Um, the I'm also comfortable with the double staked hay bales around the four foot um, uh, pit, I guess, or dewatering area, whatever you want to call it, um, and the four foot bales around the um, well location. Okay. Okay. Great. I didn't, yeah, I guess I didn't know how much water we're talking about. So you have seen these in action then before, Aaron, because I, I have it. I mean, they're kind of, they're kind of up and coming and there's going to, you know, be more and more of them. Yeah, if the dumpster is done right, you shouldn't really even see the water coming out of it. It's mm -hmm. kind of just like it, um, uh, it just drips out like in, in drops as opposed to like a, a river of water flowing out of it. Um, mm -hmm. It moves really slowly. And 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 I didn't mention it, but the, all of the stuff in the dumpster obviously is going to be taken off the site and removed. So that's the idea for that. Okay. Thank you, um, Aaron. Did you have that was kind of your rundown, right? Do you have anything else you wanted to add about this? Um, let me just look at my slide really quickly. Um, keep getting kicked out of my uh, virtual. Yeah. Um, yeah, so my, um, I did a site visit on 124. I'll show you guys some photos in just a second. Um, I would like to have the name and contact information of the contractor prior to the start of work, do an erosion control inspection and a pre-construction meeting prior to the start of work. Um, I was looking for specifics on the erosion and sediment controls for the dewatering area, but a sufficient detail has been provided to me um, since I drafted this to have a better understanding of that. And then the site should be fully stabilized upon completion of work and then a final mm -hmm. inspection prior to removal of erosion controls. Um, and I, let me just get to the photos and I'll show you the photos of the site. The delineation looked great. You can see such a clear break in the um, vegetation here. Um, and when you see the photo, you'll kind of get an idea. You can see where the lawn breaks and you get the native vegetation. And again, you're you're seeing um, the soft rush and the sensitive fern right along that that border there where the lawn ends. Um, it's if you if you can't see it well, it's kind of like right along here um, in Ward's flagging. Um, you can see maybe a little bit better in the next photo. Let me delete my Notation. Yeah, they're really, it's really hard to see the, the flags in these photos, but they, they are there. I did confirm I could see them. Um, this thing's not letting me zoom in, unfortunately. But you can see where <laughs> the boundary is very clearly on the edge of the lawn. And then this stake here indicates where the um, geothermal well location would be. And then um, if you turn around and face the opposite direction, um, this stake here indicates where the um, dumpster would be. And so this is sort of the edge of driveway and then there's like a lawn area back here. All right. Thanks, Aaron. Um, let me open up to public comment really quickly in case there's anyone who has a question or comment. Um, if you're here as an attendee at the Amherst Conservation Commission and you have a question or comment about the RDA for a geothermal well on Strong Street, see Sherry. Um, bringing you in, Sherry. Oh. Sherry, you're in as a panelist, but you're muted. Oh, you did again. We should be able to. Oh, yeah, Sherry, we should be able to hear you. 222 Strong Street, which you saw the house in some of the pictures. But I wholeheartedly think this is a wonderful project, and, and I hope the riddles are, you know, can go forward with it. 
Great. Thank you. That was all I wanted to say. I, I'm, I'm in a lot of support of it. Okay, great. Thank you, Sherry. Appreciate you being here. Yeah. All right. That, that's nice. Um, okay. All right, I think that's good for public comment. Commissioners, anyone have any questions or concerns about this? Looking good. All right, Aaron, do you want to share again? And we're looking for a motion. Thank you, um, Ward and um, Mr. and Mrs. Riddle for the thorough um, details. Thank you. Uh, I can make the motion. Thanks, Cameron. Um, I move to issue a positive determination under the wetlands bylaw checking box three and a negative determination under the wetlands protection act checking box two. Second. The second from Laura, Aaron. Voice vote, Cameron. Aye. Laura. Aye. Fletcher. Aye. Michelle. Aye. Andre. Aye. Lemon I. Unanimous for the geothermal well on Strong Street. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank, Thank you. you, everyone. Have a good night. Thank you very much. Good night. Good night. All right. Next up, another RDA. Um, so. This is a new one. Let me open it. Erin, do you want to bring folks in while I'm? Yes. This public meeting is now called to order. This meeting is being held as required by the provisions of Chapter 131, Section 40 of the General Laws of the Commonwealth, an act relative to the protection of wetlands, as most recently amended in Article 3.31, Wetlands Protection under the Town of Amherst General Bylaws. Um, and this, by way of introduction, is a request for determination of applicability, SWCA Environmental, on behalf of the Tom of Thomas Reedy to determine whether the area depicted on plans is subject to the Wetlands Protection Act, whether work to relocate a historic house, construction of a deck and driveway is subject to the Wetlands Protection Act, and whether the area and or work depicted on plans is subject to the Town of Amherst Wetlands bylaw slash regulations at 175, I think this is 175 West Street. Yes. I think Kristen and Tom. Hello. Hi, everyone. Um, so you guys know the drill. Um, if you wouldn't mind giving us a five minute overview of the RDA application, um, that would sure. be great. All right. Um, my name is Kristen McDonough. I am a certified wildlife biologist and wetland scientist, professional wetland scientist at SWCA. Um, I'm here presenting a request for determination of applicability for Tom Wrighty regarding the relocation of an historic house from 174 Sunset Ave in Amherst to 175 West Street in Amherst, which is an empty lot. On the site, uh, there's an area of maintained lawn and an abandoned garden, um, and the house is proposed to be relocated in the area of maintained lawn. The property is located within priority and estimated habitat. And when we started working on this project with Tom, we started out as assuming this was just going to be a MESA project review or a Mass Endangered Species Act project review. And then we kind of realized mid process that there were some wetlands to the west side of the lot. So we revised our approach and we got this RDA together. Um, the project is for buffer zone only and the proposal is to maintain the limit of work outside the 60 foot buffer zone. Uh, there is some site prep involved with relocating this house, including a little bit of grading and the driveway placement. Uh, the house footprint is 1,344 square feet in area, and there is a, an 832 square foot detached garage. Um, we, we estimate there's about 1,200 cubic yards of fill associated with the driveway. Um, we did a site walk today with the wetlands agent and we moved a couple of flags further closer to where the house lot where the house will be placed. Um, I think there's maybe about 20 feet of difference and we haven't had a chance to get our GIS to revise that flagging so I don't anticipate we'll close tonight. 
We also haven't heard back from Heritage, so we don't have our response letter from Heritage yet, but we know that we are the, maybe 350 feet from the Fort River. So it's wood turtles. We're anticipating a turtle protection plan, but there is no riverfront. We did take GPS points out there and we know we're outside of riverfront. Um, I'm happy to do a screen share and show you site figures and site photos if it would be helpful. All right. Yeah, I think just a plan view um, of the proposed location of the house relative to the resource. And I understand, Kristen, just to reiterate everyone. So based on the site visit today, um, they moved some wetlands in towards the proposed house site. So we have to wait on some final plans. Um, yeah, I do have the ArcGIS map um, pulled up. I can show you that. Uh, but okay. let's, let's start with the topo. So this is the okay. lot. It's right on West Street, right across from Shays. Um, as Aaron can attest, parking right here is really difficult. This is all guardrail, it's 116 and right there, everyone goes super fast on shade. So it's kind of a, a sticky spot to park at. We did the delineation in September. So we have some earlier photos. This is uh, kind of facing Northeast. That's 116 with the guardrail right there. This is the driveway is gonna go kind of right in there. There are no major uh, mature trees that are proposed to be removed. This is facing north. Um, again, just kind of showing the existing like maintained lawn area. This is facing south. This is pretty much where the house will go, right here. Um, and then this is from the maintained lawn facing down gradient towards the wetland, which is west. So the Fort River is way down there. And then this is the BBW that we flagged. And then right in here, I think is where we expanded it. Kind of right where the photographer is standing is where we expanded it today. And that was, it's kind of a drainage swale, we think. And there's a little bit of an upland berm in between the wetland line and that drainage swale that we included in the flagging today. And you can see it's all multi-flora rows. So that's probably why we missed it. And then this is, this is, you know, deeper down into the wetland area. Um, let me just grab this really quick. Uh, this isn't clean, so forgive me for it being a little bit messy, but this was, this is an aerial photo. This is the existing lawn right here. This is pretty much where the house will go. This purple line was our original wetland line. And then these new flags right here are where we're gonna bump out the wetland. So it is gonna move out, you know, maybe 20 feet or so. And we just need to get some calculations from the engineer on what percentage of on-site buffer zone is proposed to be impacted um, and revise our wetland line. And we'll get that to you along with the heritage response. And okay. let me just pull up the plans here. Um, this is the site plan. So north is actually this way. This is a little, I would have to turn this to make north go up. So just be aware that north goes that way. This is the driveway coming off of 116. This is a big tree to remain. I think that's an oak. Um, this pine will remain, this maple will remain, and this beech will remain. Uh, this is the, this is the, it's, it's riprap. Um, at the toe of the driveway. And there's, there is some topography here. Um, we don't have any soil borings to give some more detail on the soil, but when I poked the auger in, it seemed like there's some shallow ledge or maybe some fill down here. This is the grading plan. Again, so this is the driveway, north goes to our right. And this is the family home that's going to be relocated right here. So there is some grading associated with this. A little bit of site prep. This plan shows a straw wattle, but Aaron and I spoke in the field today and the applicant, Tom, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but I think we're amenable to um, increasing the erosion controls given the site topography to silt fence and straw bales. That's no problem. That was going to be my first question, just 
amping up um, sediment erosion control given the topography and the site prep. Um, that's great. Thank you. Tom, do you have anything to add on timing? Yeah, uh, great question. So we're looking to, so this is the house that's at 174 Sunset, Barry Roberts, um, 175 uh, West Street LLC. They're looking to move that house in March. And so that's that's really the timing of it. There'd have to be some, so I, ideally, you know, I know uh, Aaron and Kristen went out there today, gave some great feedback. We've talked to Phil Henry, the engineer. He's getting us the the calculations. I don't see anything with the, you know, the change of the wetlands line that's going to be overly detrimental to the project. Um, and so hopefully we get approved, you know, provided we can get an HESP comment back on by February 8th. And then, you know, ideally we start to do the work uh, end of February and prep for that March move. And there, there's just a lot of coordination for the March move because it's coming right down the center of town, um, North Pleasant Street, South Pleasant Street, all the way down here. So, um, yeah, I mean, that, that's it as far as our timing goes. But I think, I mean, Kristen did a great job. A lot of balance here on the site between proximity to wetlands, trying to keep it away, NHESP, uh, you know, endangered species and keeping those trees was a big thing too. You know, there's, you'll see that the 24 inch maple, the 48 inch oak, and then that big beech tree, <clears throat> we really wanted to keep all of those trees. And so that's why like citing the home where we did, uh, making sure that as you pull off the, the uh, 116, the driveway flattens out for a bit, as you'll see before you actually like get into the site. So it was just a lot of balancing to get where we got to. So uh, yeah, all those trees, um, you know, the, the big ones at least are gonna remain. We thought that that was an important thing for the site, so. Yeah, and this is this is a good shot. This really kind of shows where, where the house is going to be situated. Um, and then the wetland is to the right of the photographer down here. Is that the beech tree right there? Yeah, yeah, this one. Yeah. yeah. All right. Yeah, that's old. It is a gorgeous tree. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Thanks, Kristen and Tom. That's extremely thorough. I think, um, yeah, just seeing the revised delineation and if possible on those new plans, just call out the distance between that delineation and the limit of disturbance and then where the building will be, just so we know exactly how it is relative to the bylaw. 50 and 60 foot buffers. Um, and yeah, again, move, moving in March, it's going to be sloppy. Like we just know that now. So anything, anything extra for sediment and erosion control. And like, again, like I'm starting all these hearings now with like, I know you know this, but proactive communication with Aaron, um, when this is going to happen, pre-construction meetings. I mean, this is part of our boilerplate conditions, but I'm saying this um, as much as possible because there's so much going on in town, as you know, um, anything you can do to communicate with Aaron, but we can go through this again um, at the next hearing. Okay. Um, commission, let's see, let's um, open for public comment quickly. Um, so if you are here as an attendee of the Amherst Conservation Commission meeting and you have a comment or question about the RDA for a single family home at a lot um, at 175 West Street, if you could raise your hand. Not seeing anything. Again, we still have 18 attendees, but no raised hands. Okay, commissioners. Um, Kristen, would you mind stopping sharing just so I can see everyone? I'm sorry. Thank you. Um, commissioners, does anyone have any further concerns or questions other than the ones I've kind of forecasted here? Seeing a nope, I'm seeing, all right. So I think Kristen, Tom, do you have any, can we be any more clear about kind of what information we need in order to close this at the next hearing? No, thank you. Yeah, okay. I think I'm, I think I have everything that I need. It was really helpful talking with the commission and with you, Aaron, earlier today. So we appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah. Awesome. Aaron, Thanks. do we have everything that we need for, you know, just legal stuff in to the commission? Like, did, did you bring in the stuff today? I brought in, yeah, the advertisement check, the certificate of mailing, or there's 
the certified receipt for heritage and the yeah. certificate of mailings for abutters. Yeah, I think so. as far as administrative, I think you're you're good. Let me just check my um okay. check my checklist here. Legal ad fee, abutters were notified. The letter from NHESP we're waiting for, um, and just the revised plan set. I think is what we're looking at. Looking okay, at. great. Okay, so um, thanks everyone. Commissioners, we're looking for a motion to continue the public hearing for 175 West Street to February 8th, uh, 2023 at 7.35. And a so moved is fine. So moved. Michelle, second? Second. Got a second from Cameron, voice vote. Michelle? Aye. Fletcher? Aye. Cameron? Aye. Andre? Aye. Laura? Aye. And I'm also an I. Thank you. We'll see you. see you in a couple of weeks. Yep. See you soon. Bye. Okay. All right. Somebody put the coffee on. <laughs> I'm so tired. Hang in there. Yeah. Hang in there. With <laughs> All right. Um. <laughs> All right, so this is a continuation from our last hearing. This is the notice of intent EBT environmental consultants on behalf of AMHAD Development Corp for the installation of approximately 1,250 linear feet of water line at 23 and 28 Greenleaves Drive and replacement of an existing failed culvert, culvert. And just to remind everyone, this is the one where there was an active order of conditions that included a replication at the site um, that was in place. And we kind of need to get that sorted out because before we can move forward with a new any kind of new permit and associated order of conditions. Um, so we were kind of waiting on detailed information on how that was going to get sorted out at our last meeting. Um, Aaron, Glenn, Glenn, somebody? Glenn Kravoski. Yeah. Yep. Glenn. I see him there. I can okay. grab him. I just got him. A panelist. Glenn <laughs> is the... You. I think he might be the only rep. Okay. Did you move him over? You grabbed him? I I did. Did he not make it in? Sometimes it takes a minute. That's weird. Oh, there we go. Oh, he's back there. All right. Oh, no. Glad. The kid it says that he's rejoining the webinar as a panelist. Ah, there he is. Glenn, we see that you're part of our group, but we can't hear you. Oh. Can you hear me now? Yes. Hello. Welcome. Welcome. Thank you. Um, so you wouldn't mind introducing yourself and giving us kind of a three-minute overview, three to five minute overview of the project and application. That would be great. Glenn Krawoski from ABT Environmental, relative to the a site that actually began in 1998 for phase one and this was a phase two it's a proposed completion of a water line to to loop that water line from building 28 to building 23 through a causeway shown on the original plan i did walk it with aaron and uh, i believe we we did review the wetland line uh, the piping system is there i believe it's something the town wants to see that we don't have two dead end lines and this would be to complete that uh, loop line there's also a reinforced a corrugated metal pipe, excuse me, that is uh, rotted. And we had proposed to replace that with a, uh, let's see, a plastic, a plastic hot and plastic pipe. And that would go in before we put the, uh, we would put the water line in under first and then put the new pipe in at the same invert elevations that would exist there now so that we don't drain the wetland or um, increase the elevation height of the wetland. We had just today also brought in the replication area, which is uh, was at the last moment. 
we agree and uh, the commission would pro and Aaron would most likely I believe want to look at what we submitted today but it was 1926 square feet that was proposed on the road which accesses building 23 we did have Levesque survey go out there last week we've been trying to get him out there for a while to pin the, the five corners of that replication area because we didn't believe EBT Inc did not believe that it was constructed to its proper width or or depth so that I was talking to Aaron was to add that into the notice of intent we have now to ensure that we have a proper replication we would bring the elevation of that replication up it was it's too deep compared to the elevation of the existing adjacent wetland we did give a detail on my wetland replication detail that I created in 87 and modified in 07 and keep modifying which shows that we would uh, identify the existing adjacent wetland in the field although it is at approximately elevation 175 we would then use rich organic material 18 20 percent by weight bring the elevation of the area that was dug too deeply we would also expand a prior to that point the replication area into a pine grove eastern white pine where it didn't appear and i have not been back to see the stake so i have to uh, confess that it was just staked in the, during the rain event late last week I'm out of Oxford, Mass. Again, I'm sorry if I didn't fully explain who I am. Glenn Kowalski, BT Environmental Consultants, Oxford, Mass. Since '86, we've been doing these wetland consulting, and um, so so we want to ensure that the replication area meets the performance standards of 1055.4b1 through 7. Clearly, uh, there also appears that there's not a hydrologic connection, maybe a five to seven foot space. I, although it does have some gray birch in there, FAC, it's also uh, has a quite a bit of that eastern white pine and the separation between the natural wetland and the replication, we would make sure that connection is completed for hydrologic connection, ensure that obviously we have hydric soils within 12 inches of the final soil, soil surface, which would not be hard to get uh, attained in this location uh, where, where the present unfinished replication is. Wow. Okay. If we add that in, Glenn, I'm, this is great. That uh, Glenn, I'm just going to, I, Glenn, I'm going to stop you there for one, one second. I think um, this level of detail without a plan might be a little bit lost. Oh, um, I should have asked Aaron to put it on the screen. No, it's okay. It's okay. But I think what we should do, given what you've already acknowledged that Aaron got the plan at 2 PM today, I think um, yes. with this overview, I'm going to propose that we um, take public comment um, so we can do that portion of this hearing and then um, let Aaron take a look and do a full review before our next meeting so we can continue this hearing um, tonight to our, our next meeting on February 8th, if that's okay. I just think it would be, I really appreciate the overview, but I think it would be helpful to have Aaron have done a review of the plans and look at the plans as a commission um, before we go too much more into the detail, if that's okay with you. Through the chairman, boy, one, one more time. Uh, yes, that I will be here for that night, but I think I have four other hearings that night also. Okay. You know, so it, obviously it's nice that it's Zoom, but we'll be uh, scrambling around that evening. Wednesday is Great. a very good day for hearings. Yeah, so we could continue to two meetings from now if that would be better for you. I, I would just, if possible, just as soon to see how I can fit this in between where I am now going in person to meetings in this Zoom. So if I have to call in and then describe it when I'm on the phone in the parking lot of some other town hall, I would still like to keep moving this thing forward. Okay. Yeah. I could I could also just say for the record, I don't have any issues with this application. Um, the installation of the water line is all temporary disturbance. Um, the replacement of the failed culvert is a necessary needed item. And also, um, the final uh, corrections to the replication area are also appreciated and necessary. So yeah, um, I think I can have a look at it. If I have any questions or concerns, I can check in with Glenn, but I have a feeling once I do the final check of the documents that were submitted today, I, um, it's not gonna be um, a, a very uh, difficult um, next hearing. <laughs>
Okay, great. So Glenn, I guess the point is if unless um, com other commissioners have very detailed questions based on the information we currently have in front of us, I think you should, if you can call in, we'll try to keep it brief for the for the final hearing next and our next meeting on February 8th. Um, but before we get any further, let me just make sure there's no public comment. Um, if you're here as an attendee, oh, Judy Pozar, um, bringing in. Judy, okay. hello, I just, can I just reiterate um, if you could identify yourself and give us your address and then also um, if you'd be willing to limit your comments to about two comments or questions to about two minutes. Um, we won't take that long. Yeah, I'm okay. Judy Pozar. Um, I'm a resident at Green Leaves. And um, a lot of us, I think, are just curious about when this will happen, this, um, the water lines and the culvert. Does, does AM have a, have a plan of when this work would be done? Thank you. Thanks for the question, Judy. I'm just gonna leave you here to have this discussion. Um, so for this, like what we were just talking about is the um, permit through the Conservation Commission. And we're talking about being relatively confident that we can issue that at our next meeting, which is on February 8th. And then, so Glenn, I'm gonna let you take over as to when the work would actually happen. Weather permitting, the applicant again does have the stockpile of the piping at the site. It's then just the bedding that goes underneath it. The causeway is partially constructed. We would look to, and I would have a better, a very clear answer for you for the, the next meeting, but we're, I believe we're looking to move forward uh, soon as the probably February, we would not do anything, but it is a potential for March. We do know how it could be tight in March or weatherwise. But March, April, I would say April would be the latest, but I'll give you a definite, a, a closer um, idea as soon as uh, the next meeting. Or I can email it to Erin when I talk to the two clients within the next day. Uh, thank you. I'm not sure who Aaron is. Oh, oh, that Aaron. Oh. <laughs> Aaron. Aaron is the is our town John. staff representative. So Judy, if you wouldn't mind just shooting Aaron an email, you can find it on the Amherst Conservation Commission website. Then she can forward any information from Glenn to you. That'd be great. Thank you very much. Great. Thanks for being here. Um, all right. Any more comments or questions from attendees about um, this notice of intent for green leaves? Nothing. Okay, Glenn, I think we have a plan. Thank you for being here. Thank, Thank you, you for um, improving the replication um, that wasn't done right the first time. We appreciate that and we appreciate the transparency. Um, and it sounds like we'll talk to you if, if at all briefly next time. Um, so I, go ahead. I'm sorry, I'll be there. Sorry to interrupt. No problem. Great. Commissioners, we're just looking for a, a motion to continue the public hearing for, uh, this is the wrong slide, the public hearing for, what's the address? Um, oh, weird. Sorry about that. No, no problem. I, I'll get it right. Uh, a move to continue the public. Oh, okay. well, that's weird. Why? Why okay. that? The public hearing for Green Leaves Drive yep. um, to February eighth at seven forty or at seven forty p.m. All right. I will make a motion to continue the public hearing for twenty three and twenty eight Green Leaves Drive to February eighth at seven forty p.m. Second. Oh. Who, who who got that? Was that Fletcher? My contract might have got me there. Fletcher, Fletcher yeah. got it. Fletcher got it. <laughs> okay, I'm going to do a voice vote. Fletcher, aye. Laura, aye. Andre, aye. Cameron, aye. Michelle, aye. And I'm also an aye. All Thank right. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Glenn. Have a good night. All right. So I think we are through everything except uh, the Hickory Ridge order of conditions for 190 West Pomeroy Lane. 
Um, give me a second. Um, so, okay, yeah. So I'm gonna I'm gonna give a quick re recap from where I stand, and then I'm gonna hand it over to Aaron for further updates. Um, but basically, where we left off on this was um, that we had a special meeting last week. Um, to review minor administrative changes to an already permitted project. Um, and it seemed like all of the engineering changes to the plan were not a problem, um, but there was um, some kind of, we needed further information in order to move forward with a cutting plan, um, given the recent um, kind of just status change of long-eared bats um, and also concerns for birds, um, hibernating and nesting in the trees on the property. Um, so we have kind of some ideas about how to come to a middle ground on that and move forward. Um, but I also wanted to let Aaron provide an update because I, um, that you guys should know about kind of ac additional activities and developments on the site that went on this morning um, first. Yeah, so um, this morning when I was going by at about nine, um, I saw a couple um, tree removal vehicles in the public parking lot of Hickory and I was kind of puzzled and then I saw a pickup truck sort of in the back by the access road. So I called Dave first um, and then called um, Lawrence and um, I spoke to Lawrence and Lawrence said, oh no, they're, they must be just be scouting because there's no tree removal due today. Um, so I went about my site visit at West Street, and then um, when I got done with my site visit, um, connected back with Dave and found out that there was cutting going on. So I went back to Hickory. Um, the, I guess there was there was a miscommunication between AMP and the tree contractor as to what day the work was beginning. It was supposed to begin tomorrow um, after we meet tonight, and um, the trees in the eastern array um, were almost entirely um, removed. I think there was a couple still standing. But the trees, um, the new trees for removal, the trees that were part of the most more recent request, I don't believe were impacted by the cutting today. Um, those new trees uh, ran along the access road and um, those, I uh, I do have photos so that, that they were still standing. So. Um, and I, as I was there, the tree removal trucks were driving down the road. So I believe that they had finished what they were doing for the day. Um, so that, that is the update of what, what happened today. Um, and I do see Lawrence in the attendees. So I'm going to pull him in if that's okay with you, Jen. Yeah, let me, let's, uh, give me okay, two, sure. two seconds. So sure. the other thing, Aaron, just to add is that you called Lawrence, who then stopped work, right? Right. So, right. Yes. So this was not like they finished for the day and they might come back tomorrow. Work, work is stopped. Right. Okay. Um, and then go ahead. Um, we, we do have a 9 a.m. appointment tomorrow morning with Dynamic, who's a contractor for AMP, and the tree removal contractor to basically put out their sort of the um, town of Amherst expectations um, and whenever so this permit is a little bit unique because of sort of the phasing of how we're coming into it and so ordinarily we would have a pre-construction meeting where erosion controls are installed and I go out to do the pre-construction meeting meet all of the contractors discuss the permit make sure they've read it etc in this case um because the tree removal is being done prior to the sort of staging of erosion controls for the initial start of work, um, we'll be having a, a meeting with the tree contractor and um, dynamic to go over. Um, I want to make sure that each of them sign my order of conditions indicating that they've read it, that they understand it, um, and my expectations for the site staying stable during the tree removal process. Um, etc. So, th and that's pretty standard. Okay, so to recap too, I think two things to take home from this are one, the trees cut were permitted, so they weren't part of the additional ask for minor administrative change. So that's the five kind of trees at issue here were not cut today. That being said, you know, 
there should have been a pre-construction meeting and Aaron should have been contacted and notified that this was happening. Um, sounds like that has been course corrected and will happen tomorrow instead. Um, but I just wanted to be very clear about kind of what has all gone down on this property since we last met about it. Um, so with that, I wanna bring in Larry. I mean, Lawrence, excuse me, I, don't, I do the same thing. Why do I do that? It's because we had Lawrence, Larry Lawrence as our CONCOM member, and it's I'm hard so to sorry. break that yeah. habit of like shortening someone's name. Yeah, that's bad. Um, I, I won't be offended. I'll just uh, may not respond. I'm sorry, Lauren. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Um, do you have any further information about uh, well first of all an apology yes uh, it was not the intention to start the tree cutting today there was a miscommunication um the communication between ourselves and dynamic was for after wednesday um they took what after wednesday to mean from wednesday rather than uh, at the at the end of the day um you are quite right the trees that were cut down were part of the original permit there were no, none of the uh, additional trees that we were requested were were, were touched um so uh the other thing was that uh, after the meeting uh, last week, uh, and one of the suggestions was to have a biologist um, assess the trees before coming down. Um, that was never kind of concluded um, as, as, a, as a path forward. It, it, and as you mentioned, the, the trees that came down were originally permitted and that, that was no requirement for, for those trees to, to be assessed in that way. But there was a biologist that was on site that um, examined the trees before they came down to confirm that there was no nesting, roosting, uh, hibernating uh, animals um, within that. Um, so yes, a, a, apologies for that miscommunication. Um, it's not the way we uh, intended to start the project. Um, and uh, obviously we will uh, have the on-site meeting tomorrow uh, and introduce Erin to all the, the other parties as, uh, uh, as well. Great, thank you, Lawrence. Um, so I think just to cut to the chase commissioners, it, um, it sounded like a possible compromise spot on those five trees was to have a biologist inspect the trees before they're cut down. Is that something that we're all on board with and comfortable with? Would that enable us to move forward with approving all of the minor administrative changes? Yeah, Andre. Yeah, I, um, I've had a chance to look at uh, the information that uh, Alex had put together and uh, sent out to us. Alex, great job, by the way, and welcome Thank you. back. Um, and I have no objections to it at this point. Great. Thank you. Thank you, Alex, for the work on that, and Andre for offering that up front. Um, other commissioners, any concerns? I think we could be um, in a position to move forward on kind of a motion to approve these, the entire set of minor administrative administrative changes um yes. so that we can I move reviewed it in the, in the mouse with comfortable Jen. great thank you laura you um, well. great thanks cameron commissioners any other questions or comments i'm i'm comfortable can i have um just one minute after we approve it to just comment on the the bat information Sure. Yep. After it's all over. Yep. Okay. Cool. Dave, I see your hand up. Uh, sure. No, I, I, I want to just acknowledge Aaron's work and, and, you know, the coming together tomorrow with Lawrence and the entire team makes, you know, complete sense. I also wanted to let the commission know that we will be, um, I met with um, a reporter from the Gazette today. We're working with AMP. Um, we will be getting some press out, some things on our website that the project is beginning that will likely go out tomorrow or Friday. Um, I've already had a couple of calls. There are some folks who are using the area for dog walking and hiking and whatnot who may not know that there's gonna be 26 acres of solar out on the 150 acre site. So. Uh, our, our, our intention all along was working with AMP to get out some of that information. As Aaron said, this will be a phased approach. The trees will come down and the trees will be on the ground for some time uh, as AMP's team then works to redeck the bridge over the Fort River so that equipment can get from the south side of the, the fort to the north side to remove the trees, put up erosion control, um, 
and and begin the the project, the solar project itself. So, wanted to let the commission know that we will be getting some press out on that, and I'm sure my office will take some questions and we'll have some emails, and uh, we'll also put up some additional signage on the site, just with kind of a what to expect over the next couple of months. So, just wanted to let you all know that that will be happening. Great, thanks, Dave. Yeah, in our special meeting last week, we brought this idea up to Erin, just kind of like getting up front and communicating that work was starting at the site and she assured us kind of filled us in on these plans. So um, thank you for doing that. And thanks for fielding all of the questions that will come. I'm sure, there, sure. Will be, there will be questions, no doubt. Yeah, absolutely. Um, all right. Well, in that case, Erin, um, would you share your slide deck? Because there is a motion prepped for this commissioners and we need someone to read it. Yes, and um, just for the record, some of these items have been provided, but because of the um, hectic nature of the day today, I haven't had a chance to look at them. So the, the motion still stands with the outstanding requirements. Um, I just wanted to make sure that was clear because I know that that AMP has worked to get us a couple of things, like, for example, the letter from the engineer. I just haven't had a chance to read it. The um, um, promise to or the willingness to cover the cost of the footbridge, et cetera. Okay. Erin, um, are you intending to include those as conditions um, to a revised order of conditions that all of this is provided to, to the town's satisfaction? Or is are uh, we talking do we present? I'm sorry, could you say that again, um, Lawrence? So are, are, are you going to condition um, the 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 information that you're requesting um, as part of a, of a of a revised order of conditions, or are you uh, going to want us to to represent us such time that you've had that chance to review? No, the idea is um, it's basically saying that the the commission would be approving the changes that were presented to them on the 18th um, with the sure. conditions that like the letter be provided, which it already was. I just haven't looked at it yet. Um, with the condition that the um, final plan be stamped um, yep. by the engineer, the um, containment details are provided prior to construction, um, et cetera. So it's mostly saying the changes are approved, but there's like other administrative things that um, okay. are requirements of the approval. Understood. All right, brave commissioner for a motion, please. Do it. Ms. Fletcher. Oh, I'm just gonna do the bold. All right, motion. Here we go. A move that the only change identified during the 11823 meeting are acceptable to the Conservation Commission with the following conditions. One, condition conservation needs a letter stamped inside by the engineer stating that the road will be will not add fill to the bordering land subject to flooding. Two, a stamped plan must be submitted to the commission. Three, containment is required for the equipment pad. Equipment pad containment details must be reviewed and approved by the wetlands administrator prior to construction. Four, a letter must be pr provided by AMP outlining the willingness to cover the cost of the footbridge slash boardwalk structure northwest of the eastern array. Five, stormwater trenches from draft plans from 12-23-2022 will be incorporated in the final plan set. Six, if tree removal is not completed by 215-23, nesting raptor survey shall be completed prior to cutting. Note the floodplain mitigation shown on original approved plan is still required, although not shown on the revised plan set. Seconded. All right, voice vote. That was a second from Cameron, Aaron. Voice vote, Laura. Uh, voice vote, Cameron. Aye. Fletcher. Aye. Michelle. Aye. Andre. Aye. Alex. Aye. Laura, are you there? Yeah, I'm an aye. And I'm an aye. All right, Lawrence, thank you for working through us through this with us. Um, again, I will say, and I know you, you know. I, I'm repeating myself, but there's a lot going on in town and Aaron is spread very thin. But as you've seen, um, we really proactive communication could really 
help us with this project. Um, so anything you can do to communicate early and often, we really appreciate. Okay, well, what, what I would propose to do is we do have um, weekly uh, up, uh, and monthly update reports with the two week look ahead. Um, I would be happy to share those um, with you, assuming no commercial uh, commercially sensitive information is in them. Um, but certainly as the two week look ahead, just to, and put you on an email chain um, so that when we have those meetings, um, we can share them with you so you understand where things are moving in the next few weeks. Great. And it, just including Erin um, is fine and she can forward okay. and kind of flag as necessary. Um, yeah, I'm bring in with Erin. Yeah. Great. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> um, so unless you have any other questions or comments, I think we can say good night for tonight. <laughs> Great. Thank you very much. Thank you, Lawrence. All right, Michelle. Long eared bat. Yeah, no. so thank you, Alex, for putting that together. It was very helpful, informative summary. I guess my only question, and I'm sorry I didn't do this on my own time, but when you came across that um, the data that was used to make the map, was that based on like systematic statewide surveys or incidental observations? And I guess what I'm getting at was their survey done in the Amherst area and they found no bats or like, is it a no data or is it, uh, or is it that they, yeah, sorry, I'm turning into a pumpkin already, but. Yeah, no, I can, I can <laughs> got you. I'm trying to tell. Yeah. Is it no information, therefore assumed no was bats? Was it a no detection it? in Amherst or was it, no data, which the difference would be like, do we just revisit this every year and see if anyone found anything or we don't know? So I guess that's the implication. Like how, how confident are we ever? Um, Cause there's, I think it's probably a lot easier to detect bats in caves than it is um, under, you know, bark and trees. But I'm, that's, I'm just curious about, yeah, the origin of the data and how they put that together. And maybe you don't know that, but I was just wondering. The short answer is none have been reported. Okay, so we don't know then what the survey don't know. is. Don't know okay. any anything other than <clears throat> getting on Mass Wildlife's website and typing in the species and producing the map. Um, they have all the data. I all I know is um, what I found, and there was no background to okay. answer. Question. Yeah, oh. it's. I mean, you need like special sonar equipment to survey for bats. So I, unless they did, they might have done a statewide survey. I don't know. Maybe I could ask like Mass, but I'm just trying to understand what that data says. Okay, Michelle, thanks. just That's it. just so you know, I put a call into NHESP or I sent an email to NHESP about this question, um, and I'm hopefully going to be getting a message back from. I think her name is Eve Vogel. She's a uh, one of the um, wildlife biologists at NHESP who deals with the with the bat data so I can ask her when she gets back to me if there's any data available and or uh, if they ha have an answer to your question okay thanks that's it guys thanks I, I was just going to add I think it's a great question Michelle I, I was going to say my my best guess is that they don't have data because it is so hard to survey for bats. Um, you know, one of the things that I've learned through the years of uh, living and working in Amherst and, and the Valley is that, you know, if you draw concentric circles around UMass, um, it's interesting to see how many rare and endangered species have been found as you go out from the university because there's been so many undergraduate and graduate studies uh, emanating from from UMass, the undergraduate programs and graduate programs. So, you know, um, I always kind of look at the natural heritage data with a kind of a critical eye and say, "Whoa, has anybody looked for wood turtle in that town, or or looked for, you know, eastern spade foot toad in that in that uh, in that area? If there's a if there's appropriate habitat, and like you said, you know, it's kind of hard to to um, to survey bats, uh, particularly if it's not in their hibernacula, right? If they're actually out, you know, uh, under bark in in some tree, um, it's very hard to uh, you know to survey them during the summer. So, anyway, um, 
and he, so we'll, we'll, we'll have to get more information. I'll, I'll be curious what comes back from Aaron and Natural Heritage. Okay, I think that's it for tonight. Aaron, did I lose track of anything? Well, the, the only comment I was gonna make um, is I see a lot of folks on the call and yeah. Um, yeah. I- Do we have public comment on Hickory Ridge? I don't know. Well, well, so, I mean, on every agenda in town, we're supposed to have a public, you know, opportunity for public comment at the end of the meeting. So, um, or at some point during the meeting, and there's a lot of folks in the room. Yeah. So, um, it, I think it would be a good idea to um, see if anybody has anything to add. Okay. Yeah, there's consistently been a lot of people in this meeting. Um, all right. So, if you are in attendance at this Amherst, Massachusetts Conservation Commission, and you have a question or comment about Hickory Ridge or any of the, well, I guess we can't, any of the other business items we discussed tonight. If you wanna raise your hand, I can bring you in. Not no raised hands. Yeah, just, we have seven attendees hanging on, so. That's what. Um, just by a point of observation, they seem to be a lot of the uh, same attendees from my solar bylaw working group meeting. So I think um, perhaps they're listening in in the event that we do talk about solar. So. Okay. All right. Well, I think that's it. Um, everyone, thank you very much for all the extra legwork um, to figure out a compromise and a way to move forward with Hickory Ridge. I know it's really hard. Um, so Alex, thank you and, and Andre and Michelle. Um, and yeah, that's all I've got. <laughs> I, have, uh, I have an administrative question for Aaron, which I can probably ask uh, tomorrow on the phone. It has to do with the fact that I actually did show up and rather than miss the meeting, and can I watch the tape so I'm not penalized? Yes, I can send you the um, the meeting proceedings, Alex, and um, you can watch. And uh, I think I'm trying to think the so the first one was closed, the second one was closed. Um, so really, it would be um, the the third and fourth yeah. hearings that you would want to yeah. view. 175 okay. North Street and the green yep. leaves steering. Yep. So those two, Alex. Thank you. You're welcome. I apologize for being late. I'm glad you could make it. Nope. Um, and so we might be scheduling a special meeting to talk about Amherst Hills between now and February 8th. Is that possible, Aaron? Yeah, it doesn't seem like it's going to be uh, super urgent. Um, okay. It, yeah, it might be in February, mid February or something. So okay. I'll keep you posted. Okay. Okay, great. All right, motion, just looking for a motion to adjourn. I'll make that motion to adjourn. Nine I'll second that. 904. Who was the second? Was that Alex? Andre. Oh, Andre. 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 Uh, all right. Get a second in somewhere. There you go. <laughs> all right. All right. All right. Laura. All in favor in unison. Aye. Aye. <laughs> Aye. <laughs> I think that uh, was unanimous. Yeah. <laughs> I'll see you all on February 8th. Thank you. All right. All right take Bye, care. everyone. Bye. Bye. Take care. Hey, Aaron. Yes. Yes. Uh, the site meeting tomorrow. Wh yes. When and where is that? Um, so it's a it's a pre-construction meeting with the uh, tree removal folks at Hickory Ridge. Um it's it's not really like a uh pre-permitting um, meeting that where I would advise commissioners to attend. It's um, more so me reviewing um, the permit with the uh, contractors on site and making sure that they're um, fully aware that they're um, liable to follow the permit and um, uh, that I'm expecting that they follow the conditions and how I expect the site to be treated and et cetera, kind of that type of thing. So like ordinarily for site visits, I would have you come out for like, if somebody files a permit, you'd come out if you're going to be voting on it in this case where it's a pre-construction, whenever there's a pre-construction, it's usually just staff that attends. Um, 
So there's no obligation for you to go. Would it be awkward? Um, I mean, if you felt like you wanted to attend, that would be fine. I think it's... Um, I just don't know anything about Hickory Ridge, and I thought maybe it would give me an opportunity to learn something. Mm -hmm, but mm -hmm. I don't, I don't, I don't want to do something that um, would be misinterpreted or awkward or any of that. Yeah, yeah, no, that's fine. Um, and I have to go back up to New Hampshire, um, so I don't know what time the site visit is going to be. Right. So the site visits at nine o'clock. Um, if you do decide to come, it's going to be um, the uh, West Pomeroy Lane entrance to um, Hickory Ridge, which is not the main entrance by the clubhouse, but it's the um, entrance that comes in. Um, there's sort of a long skinny driveway and it goes back to two Morton buildings. Um, it's It's right next to Taylor Davis so like you pass Taylor Davis on your right and then it's the next driveway it's it's just a very uh, kind of obscure looking driveway going back um so just be up front with me um of course um would you prefer a not um you can say